In this video, we're going to be working some trig problems with radiant inputs outside the interval 0 to 2 pi. So we're going to go uh, with negative radiant inputs and radiant inputs that are bigger than 2 pi. So I think first we need to talk about coterminal angles, which is something I've mentioned here or there, but not really defined for you. So we've already discussed how theta equals 0 and theta equals 2 pi are similar and how they're different, right? They've got the same spot on the unit circle, they have the same terminal ray, but they represent different amounts of rotation. As skateboarding could tell you, right, that it's, it's going to be very different. Okay, um, and we're going to say that coterminal means they have the same terminal rate. So, for example, 0 and 2 pi are coterminal. So, if I wanted to find an angle that was coterminal to pi over 3, I'm going to hide that related fact for a second, um, and maybe I'll draw a circle. All right, that one will do. So, you know, pi over 3, that's 60 degrees up the circle from the initial ray. And I think I'm going to actually draw the initial ray for you. Okay, oh wait, that's going to snap too, yep. And then the terminal ray will be up here, pi over 3, which hopefully is a very familiar spot on the unit circle for you at this point. All right, uh, and the intersection point I'm going to call point P, you know, kind of like we did in the last video, and at other, honestly, at other points throughout the, throughout the unit. Um, that's point P there. If I was to go all the way around the circle again and end up right back where I started, so something like this, I'd have added 2 pi worth of rotation, one full circle to pi over 3. So one coterminal angle would be pi over 3 plus 2 pi. And 2 pi is 6 pi over 3, so that would be a total of 7 pi's over 3. But I could go in and I could rotate the opposite direction, like that, in the clockwise direction. And remember, clockwise is, is negative angles, at least in standard position. So I'm saying I end up in the same spot if I subtracted 2 pi as well. So I'm going to say pi over 3 minus 2 pi would be like taking pi over 3 minus 6 pi over 3, and I'd get negative 5 pi divided by 3. Okay. So those are two coterminal angles to theta equals pi over 3. Okay, so if I was searching for coterminal angles to 7 pi over 4, first I would find 7 pi over 4. 7 fourths, that's pretty close to 8 over 4, which is 2 pi. So I'm going to be short of pi by pi over 4, which is 45 degrees. So drawing the terminal ray and the, and the corresponding point. And I think about what would happen if I went 2 pi farther, right? Okay, I look like that. And I'd say, all right, well, I'm going to say this is 7 pi over 4 plus 2 pi, which is 8 pi over 4. And it's going to be a total of 15 pi divided by 4. So 15 pi over 4, coterminal to 7 pi over 4. Then I'm going to think about rotating in the clockwise direction. So if I, you know, rotated backwards one full revolution, I'd have the same terminal ray, but I've subtracted 2 pi from my radian measurement. So I would say this is 7 pi over 4 minus 8 pi over 4 equals negative pi over 4, negative 1 pi over 4. And so, if I actually looked at this and just thought about it, you know, in terms of the amount of rotation, it would make a lot of sense that that's pi over 4 in the negative direction. Okay, so that's kind of what we're looking at in this video. And so in conclusion, you know, we can say that based on what we saw here, I think the evidence was pretty plain to see, the radian measurement of two terminal angles must differ by an integer multiple of 2 pi. So I could keep going, I could keep adding more 2 pi's or subtracting more 2 pi's, and that would give me more coterminal angles, but at a certain point I think 2 is going to be enough. And so a good example I think for us to work would be like, hey, here's some angles, alpha, beta, theta, and phi. Okay, I know it's a new one, um, you may not have seen before, it's just some other Greek letter, represents some amount of angle rotation. Uh, give coterminal angles in the intervals negative 2 pi to 0 and 2 pi to 4 pi. So I'm going to, you know, keep the color scheme consistent and I'll do a negative one in red and a more positive one in blue. Alright, so pi over 6, 4 pi over 3, 3 pi over 2, and 7 pi over 4, these are all angles that are on like the kind of the standard first time through the unit circle, the ones that we're familiar with. So I'll do the first one for you and then I'm going to have you do the other three on your own. So for theta or for alpha equals pi over 6, another one could be pi over 6 minus 2 pi, which would be minus 12 pi over 6. Okay, because subtracting at any multiple of 2 pi will give me a coterminal angle, but if I want one between negative 2 pi and 0, and I've got one in the standard first trip around, then I'm going to need to, what am I saying? I'm just going to need to subtract 2 pi. All right, so 1 minus 12 is negative 11. So it's negative 11 pi over 6. And I can find another coterminal angle by, instead of subtracting 2 pi, adding 2 pi. 
So it'll be plus 12 pi over 6. And that'll be a total of 13 pi divided by 6. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. You should work the other three on your own. Just make sure that you're going to be uh, good with finding a coterminal angle because it's kind of going to be the first step. Uh, you know, when I say always a three-step process, find the spot on the unit circle, then draw a reference triangle, then do Sokotoa. In order to find the spot on the unit circle, we're going to need to find a coterminal angle. So do the other three on your own with video pause because I'm going to bring in the answers in just a few seconds here. All right, so there you have it. Um, I think that this is something, you know, well within our control. But in AP Pre-Cal, we're probably not ever going to be like, here's an angle, what's a coterminal angle? Maybe on the next quiz. But, you know, as far as the test or the AP exam goes, they're not going to ask you that question. It's going to be a tool you're going to need in order to maybe find the answer to a different question. But before we move on to, like, actually solving some of these problems that involve, you know, actual trig with angle measures outside of the interval 0 to 2 pi, I want to talk about writing an expression for all angles that are coterminal to theta equals 7 pi over 6, because that's something that's going to become relevant to us when we go to solve equations that involve trig functions. It's still a ways away, but now would be a good time for us to talk about it, as soon as we're talking about coterminal angles. So if you think about 7 pi over 6, I'll just use green, um, 7 pi over 6 plus 2 pi is coterminal. 7 pi over 6 minus 2 pi is coterminal to 7 pi over 6. Uh, but I could just, you know, add 4 pi or 6 pi or any multiple of 2 pi, any integer multiple of 2 pi, as we saw. Um, one of the AP Pre-Cal essential knowledges. It's essential that you know that coterminal angles measures are separated by an integer multiple of 2 pi. All right, so, you know, 7 pi over 6 plus 28 pi, 7 pi over 6 minus 2,000 pi. These are all coterminal angles because they're all differing by an integer multiple of 2 pi. So rather than writing out all, you know, all of the infinite numbers of coterminal angles, we're going to kind of collapse this down into a shorthand and say that anything that was 7 pi over 6 plus 2 pi times n is going to be a coterminal angle. Now, in our pre-cal class, I think we're going to be all right with just saying plus 2 pi n because we're just all going to accept that n is going to be an integer. But maybe in a more hardcore pre-cal class or the actual college version of the class, they would need you possibly to write out like a little disclaimer about what does n mean? And we would say n is an integer. And the way we say that is n is an element of or is in the set of all integers. And the symbol for the set of all integers is a double back to Z. And I think the reason Z for integers is because the word for integers in a different language, maybe German, I feel like I heard that. Uh, maybe it starts with a Z or, or something like that. I don't know. Um, but, you know, in mathematics, the, the double back Z, uh, that stands for the set of all integers, which is like negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, going all the way to infinity and back to negative infinity, um, which you would consider maybe whole numbers, but... Whole numbers meaning something different in math. If you or if you were for like math seven or, or algebra one or whatever you're talking about the classes of numbers, I think that's enough discussion of that. This will be our expression in our pre-calculus class. All right, now we're really going to get to it, finding the values of the trig functions outside the standard zero to two pi interval. So I'm going to remind you of our three-step process first. Let me just write that in. Okay, so just to remind you once again. We're going to start by finding the location of the angle on a circle. Then we're going to draw a reference triangle, which I typically label as the most important step. And then we're going to do Sokotoa on that reference triangle. But I will say that for today, you know, when we're outside of the interval 0 to 2 pi, that uh, finding theta on the circle is going to require some effort as well. And that we're just going to, our techniques going to be find a coterminal angle that we're familiar with and just go from there. So if we're confronted with something like sine of negative pi over 3. Now, I will say that you probably know where negative pi over 3 is, but I'm just going to kind of model the technique of, of going and finding the coterminal angle for the ones that you don't know, right? Say, you don't, say you're not good for negative 4 pi over 3. That could be a little tricky. Um, or, you know, negative 17 pi over 6. So it's more negative than negative 2 pi, which I don't know if we're going to run into here, but, you know, we could potentially uh, encounter that somewhere else. All right, so sine of pi over 3, or negative pi over 3. What I'm going to do is first I'm going to find a coterminal angle. So a coterminal angle. 
Okay, I've started with a negative angle, so I should probably add to it to get into what I'm familiar with, which is, you know, zero to positive two pi. So I'm gonna say negative pi over three, and I'm gonna add two pi to get a coterminal angle, so that'll be plus six pi over three, and that equals five pi over three. Okay, so finding the spot on the unit circle, I'm just gonna go label what I know to be five pi over three. Okay, so five pi over three is almost all the way to two pi, it's just short by pi over three. Okay. And then, when, okay, step two, draw a reference triangle. So I'm going to draw my triangle down here, back up to the x-axis, always the x-axis. And then the third side there. Label it as a right triangle, and now I'm going to label the sides. Okay, this is going to be a 30, 60, 90 because it's a pi over three or a pi over six. And so I might you know, label that, that's gonna be a 60 degree angle. Uh, hypotenuse is going to be one on a short, or I mean, pardon me, on a 30, 60, 90 triangle, the short leg is a half and the long leg is root three over two. You've probably heard me say that about a hundred times by this point. Now here, I need to stop for a second and say, okay, what's going to be negative? Okay, I'm in the fourth quadrant. So X is going to be positive. Y is going to be negative. The vertical leg will be negative. Okay. So it's negative root three over two. And yeah, that's what we're looking for is sign. So, you know, do so katoa, that's equal to opposite over hypotenuse, negative root three divided by two. Now, all that said, if you know where negative pi over three is, you do not need to go and like find a coterminal angle. If you just know where the spot is in the circle, go for it, right? We're really not checking your work on this. I heard an interesting question. It was like, oh, you know, cause I was saying, um, we want you to be able to do this uh, on your own without drawing a diagram. And then the question, natural question was like, what if I'm wrong? How am I going to get partial credit? And the reality is in AP Pre-Cal and the free response, there isn't a whole lot of partial credit. It's like part by part, it's pretty much all or nothing. Um, and in our class, we're not really giving you credit for the work um, because we accept that plenty of people are able to do these mentally, right? So the work is there to just help. So let's go ahead and do another one or maybe two more and then I'll set you loose on the rest of them. All right, so cosine of 17 pi over six, first step. Find a coterminal co angle so I can find the location on the circle. So 17 pi over six is bigger than two pi. And I know that because two pi would be 12 pi over six. So I'm gonna subtract two pi. I'll get coterminal angle is five pi over six. Okay, and at this point, hopefully you're knowing that five pi over six is right there, almost all the way to pi, short by pi over six. We can draw ourselves a little reference triangle back to the x-axis and a third leg there make it a right triangle okay it's another 30 60 90 I'm not I drew it too small to actually draw in my uh, reference angle and well you know I can tell this is not a right triangle just looking at it at the image on screen uh, but if I put that square thing there that makes a right triangle right so okay hypotenuse is one short leg is a half long leg is root three divided by two I'm going to think about what's positive and what's negative in the second quadrant y is positive and x is negative so the horizontal leg will be negative cosine of 17 by over six Adjacent over hypotenuse, this one's also negative root 3 over 2. And then let's see, what's, uh, what's the next one? All right, tangent of negative 2 pi over 3. I think that'll be a good one for me to, to do for you. So a coterminal angle, if I'm starting off with a negative angle, I should add 2 pi. So that'll be plus 6 pi over 3. 6 minus 2 is 4. So I'm sitting at 4 pi divided by 3. That's down here. Drawing a reference triangle. Label the side lengths, hypotenuse one, short leg half, long leg root three over two. And then think about what's gonna be negative in the third quadrant, both X and Y are negative, so both the horizontal and vertical legs will be negative. And then I'm gonna do Sokotoa, okay? Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So negative root three divided by two, divided by negative a half, so that's like multiplying by negative two over one. I'm going to cancel off the twos, and I'm going to get, and also cancel the negatives. Negative square root of three times negative one, that's just going to be equal positive square root of three. Okay, now the last one I'm going to do for you is going to be secant of seven pi over three. So the coterminal angle is seven pi over three, that's bigger than two pi, and I know that because two pi would be six pi over three. So I'm going to subtract two pi to get myself back to something I'm familiar with. So that's minus six pi over three. And that'll and leave me with one pi divided by three. Okay. So my coterminal angle is pi over three. I go to there. I'm gonna draw a reference triangle. 
and give it some labels. The hypotenuse is 1. It's a 30, 60, 90, so I have a short leg and a long leg. And that's my reference angle of 60 degrees. Okay, at this point we want secant. So first we're going to need cosine of 7 pi divided by 3, and that's going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. That's a half. And as a result, I can conclude that cos or pardon me, secant of 7 pi over 3, that's going to be 2 over 1. So I'm going to say secant of 7 pi over 3 equals 2. Okay, now I think you're ready. Here's two for you to try on your own. They're both negative, but I'm, you know, I think you'll just add two pi to them. Try these on your own. Check your answer against mine, because I'm going to bring in my answers here in just a couple of seconds. Okay, there you go. There's my answers. Uh, I got 2 for cosecant of negative pi over 6 and root 3 over 3 for cotangent of negative 5 pi over 3. Now, if you got these also, you're good to go. Let's keep moving. If not, you might pause on this screen for a second and ponder and, and see where you went wrong. If you still can't figure it out, you come talk to me before school or something like that. Okay, so let's, uh, do, let's do one more example. Now, let's get it so you can read it. Um, you know I wasn't going to be able to go through the whole video without uh, talking about a circle that didn't have radius 1, right? That seems to be a big theme in AP Pre-Cal. So what are the coordinates of the point where the terminal ray of an angle in standard position with radian measurement of negative 4 pi over 3 and a circle of radius 10 intersect? We're going to need a diagram. Okay, so I've got the, the diagram I need. Next, I need to find a coterminal angle. You see me do that quite a bit in this video, so I'm just copying my work there. Uh, I'm going to find that it's 2 pi over 3, and then I'm going to kind of like draw a reference triangle uh, so I can hopefully figure uh, we want the coordinates of the point. So we're going to go to 2 pi over 3 and draw our terminal angle. Or I guess the terminal ray of our angle. And so I've got that there. I'm going to draw a reference triangle. Okay, because this is a pi over 3, I know it's going to be a 30, 60, 90. And so the hypotenuse is 1, the short leg is a half, and the long leg is root 3 divided by 2. Okay, I really like the way that looked. I'm going to try a little harder. There we go. All right, now I'm going to think about what's positive and what's negative in the second quadrant. X is negative and Y is positive, so the horizontal leg will be negative and the vertical leg will be positive. Okay, um, now this is on the unit circle. So I would think about if I wanted this to be, you know, with a circle of radius 10, I would multiply this whole picture by 10. Okay, so, and if you needed to draw out a, a different diagram, I think you could, uh, but this intersection point, uh, maybe I'll call it point P, like we've been doing, is going to have coordinates. Okay, the x coordinate is going to be the equivalent to the horizontal leg of the triangle, negative a half times 10, that's negative 5. And the vertical leg will be 10 times root 3 over 2, so that'll be 5 root 3 divided by 2. Right. And that's coordinates point P. And I think that's going to be all for, for this video. At this point, you just need to practice this stuff on your own. So that's all. Thanks for watching.